Hello. In this video, we're going to study differentials, in particular, look at the role of differentials in estimating change in functions. So differentials are uh, a way of estimating the change in a function, the output of a function, given some change in the input. Typically, uh, we'll use symbols like dx, we'll also see dy and maybe df to represent differentials. Normally, dx, which is also often referred to as delta x, will be the change in the input. That is the change in the x input to a function, and the dy or df, which as you see in the table above is defined as f prime of x dx. This is an estimate. of the change in the value, the output value for f. Now we see here uh, a table from page 208 and an illustration from page 205. The illustration uh, from 205 kind of illustrates the top line of the table. You should know the items in this table very well and understand this terminology, absolute change, relative change, percentage change. We'll do some examples with that. But also know in particular how this top line relates to the picture down here. The picture is an illustration of what goes on in that top line. So let's take a closer look at the notation, in particular the top line here. So uh, although as again, as we said, dx, and in the past we used delta x, these two things are interchangeable. dx, delta x represent the change in the input to the function f, and often that change will be from a, an input, to input a plus delta x or a plus dx. And that's what's illustrated up here in this line on, on this side of the table. So uh, as the table defines, we have the absolute change here. This is called delta f. This is the change in the function. is just the difference in the two output values, the one that goes along with a and the one that goes along with a plus dx, or if you like, a plus delta x. This change is illustrated in the table down here. In fact, by this vertical line right here, or this vertical line right here, the, di the, the, the length of this line is delta y or delta f. And you can see that because this is a vertical line, you can find the length of that line by looking at the y-coordinate of the lower point, which is f of a and the y-coordinate at the upper point, which is f of a plus dx. So we're taking a look at these two y-coordinates, and their difference is the change in, in, the, uh, in the function. Okay. Now, uh, often this delta f is something we can't get a hold of exactly, but uh, mathematicians, engineers, scientists often use a, a, an alternative calculation to get a good estimate for this change, and that estimate is given by df up here in the table. And df is the analogous change in the tangent line as you make the change dx in the input. So this, this change in the tangent line is found here in the illustration. And again, you see delta l which corresponds to df in this case, so delta L is equal to df. This is this just the change in the y-coordinate of the tangent line. Okay. And so we see here the tangent line at A is at this level, this y-level down here, and when you get to a plus dx or a plus delta x, it's up here. 
Now, the nice thing about working with a tangent line with a line is we know that this line has slope of f prime of a. And because slope is rise over run, the slope f prime of a, where the line is the rise over the run, and again you can look back in the picture and see the rise is the delta f, or delta l, excuse me, and the run is the dx or delta x. And so when you solve for delta l here, by multiplying both sides by dx, you see delta l is given by f prime of a dx, and of course that's what we see over here. Now notice, although dx and delta x are considered to be the same thing, when you look at the change in the output, delta f and df, those are different. One of them represents the actual change in the function value, again given by this purple line, and the other represents the change in the tangent. Now, essentially the, the big idea behind differentials is this, is that if you know the value of f at a point a and want to estimate the value of f at a nearby point a plus dx, if that calculation is too hard, you might be just as well off by instead giving the output for the tangent line at that point a plus dx. We'll see an example of that in just a moment. So the study differentials is often a way of looking at tangent line approximation. And again, notice that as, as dx gets smaller and a plus dx move towards a, the difference between the tangent line output and the f output gets smaller and smaller. So let's take a look at an example then of, of how this can work out in practice. So we're going to use differentials to approximate the numbers cube root of 65.44. So we need a function to work with. We're going to we're working with a cube root, so we're going to take as our function g of x equals the cube root of x. And so we can rephrase the problem and say we want to be, we want to find g of 65.44. So a different approximation of a function value works best when the given x value, 65.44 in this case, is close to a value of x for which the function is easy. In this case, that nice x, that nice x value is 64. We're going to be taking a equal to 64 in our application, and then computing g of a is g of 64, which of course is the cube root of 64 and turns out to be 4. So in the language, setting up for the language of differentials, we can say the following. The uh, cube root of 64, of cube root of 65.44, right here, that's g of 65.44, and we can write that as g of 64, there is our nice point, and then plus what's going to amount to our dx, or change in the input, 1.44. Now we can add 0 in a special form. g of 64 minus g of 64 is 0. We see those two items here and here. And so this top line is equal to g of 64 plus the quantity g of 64.144 minus g of 64. The two g of 64s cancel to give you back the top line. And now in the language of differentials we saw in the previous slide, this is g of 64, and we recognize this from that table on page 208 as just delta g. Now, typically in these problems, delta g is, is hard to calculate, and so we're going to uh, do this with an estimate. So again, looking back at page two. 208, or the previous slide, just to get our bearings here, we've taken a to be 64, that's the nice point at which we can evaluate the function, 
the change in A, the change in the input, is 1.44. That gets us to uh, G of 65.44. In the future, we're going to call this change DX also. And then finally, the delta G is just the change in the output value from the nice point, G of 64, to the point of interest, 64.144. Now again, looking back at our table, uh, the purpose of differentials in this case, or the use, is to approximate this change in G by a simpler computation. And as we saw in the previous table, we're often going to use the estimate change in G is equal to the differential DG up here. And DG is defined to be G prime of X DX. In other words, this is the change in the tangent line as we move from 64 to 60 to 64 plus 1.44. So again, this is the change in the tangent line. And we use that to approximate the change in the function. Now we can do this calculation. We know what g is. It's the cube root of x. So this application then will give us... So solving for g of 65.44, the cube of 65.44, leads us to this expression. And here we have, this is really the cube root of 65.44. And again, as we saw up here in this top line on the right, we're using or we're approximating this change by uh, dg, which is g prime of a dx. So if we solve this expression with the approximation sign for g of 65.44, we come up with cube of 65.44 is approximately g of 64 plus g prime of 64 dx. Now it's just a matter of doing the calculations. Compute g prime of x first. g prime is the derivative of x to the one-third, that is the cube root, one-third x to the minus two-thirds, or one over three times x to the two-thirds power. We, want to, we need to uh, have the value of g prime of a or g prime of 64, so we do that calculation next using our derivative. We have one over three times 65 to the two-thirds, or 64 to the two-thirds, 64 to the 2 thirds is the cubit of 64, which is 4 squared, which gives us 16. So 1 over 3 times 16, or 1 over 48. Now we're going to place this number in the above calculation. And we get our estimation cube root of 65.44 is g of 64 plus g prime of 64 dx. And now we can fill in the numbers. g of 64 turns out to be 4. The derivative g prime is 1 over 48. And the dx is 1.44. And that gives us a final result or number here of 4.03. So uh, the differentials lead to the approximation, 65.44 is approximately 4.03. Now you should check this with your calculator. Plug in 65.44 in your calculator, take the cube root. How close are you to 4.03? Is this differential a, uh, a good estimate? Now we're going to take another look at this problem okay, and another perspective on it. As we mentioned earlier, differentials are a way of talking about the tangent line approximation. So we're going to do this same problem again approximate the cube root of 65.44. We'll use the tangent line approximation and show that this is the previous solution just with different notation. So let's start by looking at the graph of the cube root of x and the tangent line to the graph at the point 64, 4. So these are illustrated in the graph here. Here's the point 64, 4 input of 64, output of cube root of 64. And uh, the reason this approximation is so good is 
Uh, this graph really is the graph of y equals the cube root of x. That's in blue, and the tangent line, which is in orange. You may have to look pretty carefully, but you, know, you can put your face right up to the screen and look, and you really will see two graphs there, a blue one and an orange one. So it looks like from this graph that uh, the cube root of 65.44, which is this height from the x-axis the x up to the graph, is approximately equal to the y-coordinate of the tangent line at x equals 65.44. And again, this is looks like it's going to be a good approximation because we can see that these two graphs differ by very little over this interval. The dotted line indicates 65.44. And if we move up to the function graph or the tangent line graph, we see they're almost the same. So let's actually do the arithmetic or calculus behind this. Let's find the equation for the tangent line first. So the tangent to the graph, cube root graph, at the point 64, 4. So we'll find the tangent line at this point. The tangent line is g of 64 times g prime of 64, x minus 64. This is the point slope form essentially for the equation of a line. The line passed through the point 64, comma g of 64, which is 4, and has slope equal to the derivative of g prime of 64. We computed this derivative before. We got 1 over 48, and the other numbers are easy to fill in. And so this then gives us the equation for the tangent line as we've copied down here. Again, that's the line in orange. So we're going to use the y value of the tangent line at this point, 65.44. Going to put that x value into the tangent line and see what comes out. And that's not a hard calculation. As the graph suggests, for x values close to 64, we'll assume 65.4 is close. The y value for g of x, as we see, is close to the y value for the tangent line. And that's, we can actually see that right there. And you can, it's hard to tell the difference between the two. So, based on that, the y value of the function the y value of the function, and there's a typo here, this should be the cube root of 65.44 here. Okay. That is g of 65.44, and as we said, we're going to have the function value replaced by the tangent line value, so we take the tangent line equation instead and put in 65.44 there. We get 4 plus 148. 65 point, it's a bad day here, it should have been 4, 4, not 5, 5, minus 64, and that turns out to be 4.03. Now you can see the uh, way the previous solution is embedded here. What we are seeing right here, this is the previous dx, 1.44 when you take that difference. And the derivative times dx, this is the dg we worked with earlier. The early solution, we saw that the approximation of the cube root was the cube root at 64 plus the change in the function approximated by, by dg. So the tangent line approximation really is the same solution. And I hope you enjoyed that.